So we're going to continue our discussion of Java today. And so last time what we saw was that you could create uh, multiple files, put into each file a class, and then you can use these classes in other files, right? So if you remember, we had like a class called, I think, animal or something, or a person, and then we had another file where we basically used that class in the other file. So the point, the takeaway from that is that as your code grows, the goal is to break it up into small pieces and put it into separate files. Now, as you begin to build a complicated project, the number of files will increase inevitably. And you don't want to have one directory with like, you know, 50,000 files in it, right? At some point, you want to kind of organize it better. How do you organize files in your file system? Do you put everything in your C drive? No. You have folders, exactly. You have directories. You have ways of grouping similar things together. You have a folder for your documents, a folder for your music, right? So you group similar things together. Well, in programming, we do something very similar. We group things that make sense together in the same directory. And Java is no exception. So in Java, for example, let's say I wanted to make a class with like utility, sorry, I want to make like a, a bunch of utility classes. Classes that help me do things like, you know, a math utility class that has a bunch of like, you know, square roots and power and things like that. What I can do is I can create a directory. So let me do a new uh, directory folder. Here we go and call it utils. There it is. Now I have a directory called utils, right? Now I can add a class inside of that directory. Let's call it math, just why not? So let's do math.java. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is add a class to it called? Math. Exactly. Math. And what I want to do is add a bunch of functions to the class itself. Not to the things that are made from it, but to the class itself. How do I add something to the class itself? Static. If I do this, public static static int uh, pow, pow being the power of, and pow takes, let's say, two ints, int a and int b. Oop, sorry, one sec. Int b. And then returns a... Wait, power of, oh, let's do squared. So we just return a times a. That's easier. Return a times a. Okay. So fine. So we have that. Now in here, I can create at a root level in the beginning at the, at the highest directory, I can create another class. Let's call it, I don't know, driver.java. What is the name of the class I'm going to add here? Good. And I need to add a main. What's the syntax for main? Okay. Which takes an array of strings, if you recall. Um, or a string, of, an array of boluses. Okay. And now from here, I want to use this library to compute the square of a number. So I have an int, uh, you know, val, which is four. And I want to know what the square of four is. So I want to do something like math.sq. Uh, okay, let's call it uh, something else. Wait, sorry, one second. Rename ma my math. Let's call it my math. Here we go. My math. Okay, and let's call this my. Okay, and now in here I'm gonna say my math dot sq, and I'm going to call val. Now, one thing that you might notice is that my math is underlined in red. Why? Well, it it doesn't know where my math is. It, remember when we had classes in the same directory? This was not a problem. But now I've added my math to a different directory. So it can't find it. So what I have to do 
first of all, is there's in Java there's a notion of a package. While packages have different meanings in Java, for now you can just think of it as the directory in which it's in. So what directory is this in? Utils, right? So we do package utils. So then in here, if, we if I want to use this, I can just say utils.mymath and I'm done. Yes? I didn't get the utils part. Okay. So utils is the directory in which it's in, right? This is saying go into utils and then pick the class that's inside of that. So it finds my math by going into utils and then doing my math. And now here, because remember it's a static function, we know that sq is attached to the class itself. So I can just do the name of the class, sq. And now I can do this again. Let's say I want to compute the square of 100. I do this. Let's say I want to compute the square of 500. I do this. Now, notice that I keep writing utils dot name of class. Utils dot name of class. That can get tedious. So one thing we can do to simplify things is at the top we can just say import utils dot my path. And now here I no longer have to write the full path. Make sense? Because this is saying where my math is, and it's just assuming, okay, this is this, so it figures out where it is by default. Yes? Can we import all the classes in the same directory? Yes. So if you, if let's say, let's say in addition to my math, I had another one called. Um, I mean, like with just writing the import to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like awesome. Uh, let's call it my array utils.java. Here we will do public public class my array utils and this will have something like a public stat <laughs> system dot out dot print line uh, yay okay and then here we say what package it's in so it's in package utils okay now here if I wanted to use my array I could do one of two things I could either do utils dot my array utils dot my array and then do dot foo no problem I could do that I could also import my u import utils dot my array here and then just now I don't have to do this anymore or and now to answer your question notice how they're both coming from utils if I wanted to import everything inside of utils I could just do star and now I've imported both of these, and now I can use this one, and I can use this one without a problem. So what's that just done? Everything. Sah. Asma utilzi amen inche. Sah asma utilzi mechi matha, sah asma utilzi mechi myre utilza. Got it? So this is saying specifically get me the my math from utils or specifically my array utils. This says give me everything inside of utils. Now you might say, okay, utils, fine, but remember, a directory can have a directory inside of it. You can have a directory inside of a directory inside of a directory inside of a directory inside of that a bunch of classes. So writing these long something dot something dot something sentences is going to get tedious, so using imports, it makes things a lot easier. Yes? Okay, so... One, I, and I think I understand your question, so let me say one thing and then you tell me. Now imagine I have another MyMath here. Suppose I create another file called MyMath in the root directory. Root, how's it going? Chip, root here in the root directory. It's like the top directory. Yeah? Okay, so MyMath.java. Uh, and then MyMath is going to contain in it public class MyMath. And let's give it another static method, public static void bar, why not? And it's going to system dot out dot print line. Okay, okay. Whatever. <laughs> Question. When I say my math, which my math am I referring to? 
It's a bit vague, right? And here, it's say, because it's not finding it, I'm assuming it actually chose the one that's in my directory and not the one inside of utils. So when there is ambiguity, when there are two things in the same context, what, how can I be very specific about which one I mean? Exactly, just say it. I want to use this one. I want to use this one. I want to use this one. And for this one, use that one. This is how you can disambiguate classes with the same name in different packages. What is the path? This, if you think about it, hang on. It's like awesome. Okay, what is the full path of my path? What is the full path? Utils.mypath, right? What is the full path of this one? My path. That's the full path, right? So if you just write my path, the, it's going to use the, very, the most specific thing, which is the full path. So it's going to assume you mean this one. For this one, it's going to assume you mean that one. But can I say logic on? Then, uh, what's the point of importing utils in this case? Okay, in, in this case, you're right. In this case, actually, you don't need it. Oh, well, unless you want it for that guy, but okay. Or you could just say for this one, my array utils. Okay, you can do that, right? Um, but in, in many cases, you don't have collisions. And so it doesn't, you know, this is just for the case where you do have a collision. If you don't have ambiguity, you don't have collision, then just do imports and, and you're done. Yeah. In most Java code, you just see imports at the top and then a bunch of code. Yes? If we don't look at them like directories, can two, a class have two packages, like being in two packages? The same class cannot be in two packages, no. I mean, you can have two, two, the same name, like a class with the same name, but it's two separate. You understand what I'm saying, right? Um, yeah. Other questions? And so this is a way that you can sort of organize your code, right? And in your homework, if you've noticed, I've asked you to create two packages, I think, a utils package and like an animals package, I think, right? Yeah. And then you put classes that have to do with animals into the animals package classes that have to do with utils into the utils package and then you have a driver at the root level that uses them to do something yes is that is that clear okay something that I've noticed that you guys still don't quite understand is the difference between static and non-static it's much easier than you think just bear with me for one moment the name of the class is my math right Notice here, I'm just doing the name of the class, dot sq. This is because sq is attached to the class itself. And what is a class? It's just a description, right? Then you can use this class to make an instance. So I could say, for example, um, okay, it doesn't make sense to make a math instance. Let's create an animal package. So let's do a folder, animal. And then inside of animal, let's create a class. Uh, file, so let's call it puppy. Okay, so public class puppy. And what package is this in? It's an animal. Wait, was the homework to create a class called puppy? Yes. Uh, you're like, this seems very f vaguely familiar. Kitten. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> Wait, why can't I change it to kitten? <laughs> Ah, okay, cool. All right, sorry about that. I could have said panda, you're right. Okay, so first thing. If I just do this, public static um, int foo is one. That means from here, from my driver, I can just do kitten 
dot foo. Can it fi look? Oh, Eclipse is smart. It just figured out that it's in Kitna. It imported it for me. Okay. Um, wait, what? Oh, okay. Now it wants me to int a is now foo, or I can also print kitten foo. Okay, good. So notice that foo is attached to the class itself called kitten, right? Now I want to actually make kittens. I want to make a kitten called Bob, okay? So what I do is I do kitten, you know, Bob, his new kitten, there you go. And then I want to another, make another kitten called Fred. Okay. And I want these kittens to have uh, no, wait. <laughs> babies. <laughs> Let's have our kittens have babies. So, public um, kitten array babies. Oh, oops, sorry, that's not how you make an array. You do. Oh, how do you make a new array? New. What is, is it something like, and then the length. Let's, let's have a maximum of 10 kittens. Anything else, we, we, we don't accept any more babies. Okay, so then once we have, huh? Okay. Okay, so now we have that, and then we can do uh, fred.babies0 is a new kitten. There you go. And then fred.babies1 is also a new kitten. Okay, so Fred, for some reason, has uh, two babies. There are kittens. So Bob is a kitten, Fred is a kitten, and Fred has two babies that are both kittens. Um, let's give them like a nickname. So each, each uh, kitten should have a nickname. Public, exactly. <laughs> Nickname, and then let's have them. Uh, so we can do this. Look, we can either say, every time we make something, we do Bob dot nickname is Boros Boros one. Actually, wait. This is this is Bob and Fred. Wait. So let's call this one Bob. Fred dot nickname is Fred, and then these guys are. Fred.babies0 dot nickname that guy is Boros1. And then this one is Fred.babies1 dot nickname is Boros2. Okay. Notice I'm using kitten as a template to create a new kitten. So I'm saying new, I want a new kitten. And palm, I get a kitten and I throw it into this variable. Then I say new kitten again, I get another one, I get it here. A new kitten here, a new kitten here. So now I have four kittens, Bob, Fred, Boros1 and Boros2. Is there anything unfamiliar or confusing about the syntax? Any questions about this? It's simple? Ah. Yeah? It's a public string nickname. The fact that it's public means I can from over here just do dot nickname and change it. Now, what I want to do is because I want every kitten to have a nickname, Instead of having it be two lines of code, let me turn it into one line of code and just do Bob. That takes a string nickname and assigns that to this dot nickname. Now what that means is that I can remove all these extra lines of code, making my code a lot simpler. Did you see how many lines of code I removed just by adding a nice constructor that initializes things for me? Is it clear what's happening here? 
Any questions? Can you make it more clear? Can I make it more clear? <coughs> okay. So whenever you make something new. Okay. When a father and a mother come together to make a child. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up. They grant the child <laughs> genetic material, right? They set the genetic material at the beginning. Now, it turns out, by the way, that your genes can actually change over time. Did you know that? Yeah, the, your genes can actually mutate over time. Furthermore, the protein... I'm getting into biology now. <laughs> okay, for those of you who are curious, the proteins that are created by reading out your genes, the amount of proteins is actually regulated by various things that bind to your genes, right? Uh, which then turns it into RNA and then off to proteins, right? Okay. Um, huh? Okay, so... Back to biology. Um, your genes are set to some initial state, the starting state, and then later things can change, right? Okay, so what that means is that there is some biological mechanism that sets things up for you at the beginning. Things can change later, sure, but you need something to initialize you, to set you up, right? Okay, in a code, in programming, when you're creating an object, you need something to set it up, to initialize it, to set the, the starting state. The state may change later, but you want something to set it up at the beginning. This is called the constructor. It's basically a function, okay? This, this is the constructor for a kitten. The only initial state that we have for a kitten is the nickname. We might change the nickname later. We might add other things to the kitten later, like age, name, you know, height, weight, whatever. But initially, when the kitten is first made, it is granted a nickname just as you were first granted some genetic material at the beginning. Fair? Okay, so that's what a constructor is. Now again, I might change that, right? I might say, you know what? I'm going to change the nickname for Bob to nickname, you know, uh, Mary. Why not? Mary. Right? Okay. I, but that's fine. But the initial state, the starting nickname was Bob. Later it turned to Mary. Fair? Okay. So the constructor is exactly that. It's a function that runs at the beginning to set things up. In, to initialize. Remember that. To initialize. It means to set things up. Get them ready. Yes, sir? Is there any way we could have printed both nicknames? Put both nicknames? <laughs> but then you need two variables, right? Otherwise, you're going to... You only have one... Nickname means one piece of memory. If you put Bob in there and then you put Mary, you're gonna de you're gonna have to delete this to put this. What do you mean printed? You mean system dot print line? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean you're just printing the value of the variable, right? So you could do system dot out dot print line uh, Bob dot nickname, and you will get Bob. And then if you do Bob dot nickname is you know Joe Lee whatever, uh, then if you do uh, wait Nick Nick and Babe, if you do this, then you will get what you expect, which is Joe Lee. How's that sure? Cool. Um, uh, other wait, did I so just when you said clarify, I did. Cool. Yes. Opening the other, yes, kitten. And so we initialized the nickname, and in the first case, we did public stream nickname. We did the same thing, right? In, in what, when you said in the first case, what first case? When we were in the areas, not in the function, when we were public stream nickname. So we did the same thing, we initialized the 
You mean b before we did this, when we just did dot nickname equals whatever? What's your question? Yeah. Yeah, in Java it's called a member. But yes, it's basically a key. Yes. So look, exactly. This is the point that I want to make. When you say static, you're attaching this value to the class itself. So you can do kitten.foo. But if you don't do it's a static thing, you can't do just kitten.babies because the question is which kitten? Vorkatum. Just karva says katu katu ket balikner. Vorkatum. Okay, so that means these ones are attached to the instance, to the actual thing that is made using kitten. That's it. That's the difference. Static is attached to the class. Non-static, things that don't have static, are attached to the actual things that you make. That's it. That's the confusion. That, did I solve the confusion for you? There was a... Yes, sir. Yeah, of course. It's not, it doesn't have to be unique. Yes, 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 of course. Here I can say, let's, let's have bob.nickname B. Watch this. Let's have bob.nickname be the same thing as fred.nickname and have that be Joe. Yeah, it's the same thing as doing this. Um, so you, you do this first. And then you do this. Which is exactly the same as doing this. You see how this is exactly the same as this? Wait, ah, as this? Yes, you, you see how it's the same thing? M multiple comparisons? Just like JavaScript. No, if you do two, three. Ah, che, che, scaro, sense, yev, heto, urishpan, heto, eli, sense, che, no, you can't do that. Et es hartz, no, che, che, scaro. Sorry, in Java, I'm yet quota, yere kachi, whatever. Why is assigning hama linuma? Because assignment literally. Okay, it's sorry. I don't now. I'm confusing you guys. Sorry, for, you don't have to know that you can do this. Don't worry. But just for you guys, what this will do is it will compute this, right? And then it will set this to whatever this is. But this was set to that. Therefore, this is set to that. No. Yes, havasachi sak tsuma sa asuma es vetsuk tisramesh che. Jokes? Uh, oh, can you do like you can do plus avasar? He makalini nickname of Freddy, vora in church, Fred. Kalini Fred Joe, Kalini Freddy nickname, isk Bobby nickname, Kalini Joe. That's a sincere shot. Says Mana Chigares go did much. Awesome in true. Wait, listen. While you can do crazy crap like this, do not do crazy crap like this. <laughs> Let me explain why. Because even though you get it and you know these tricks and you're awesome, you're going to work with other p engineers that might not know the trick. You understand? So you want to write your code in a very simple to understand way. Yeah, always. Um, yes? Good question. Okay, so here's what she's asking. She's like, well, okay, we created a kitten and we initialized the kitten with a nickname, right? Is it possible to make a kitten like blank without an argument? No. Do you, do you know why? Look, 
Exactly. But what we can do is we can create another constructor that does not take any arguments. Now we've solved our problem. Because what will happen? If you run this one, which constructor will it call? Exactly. This one. But if you run this one, it will call this constructor, which does nothing. Yeah? In fact, maybe it doesn't do nothing. Maybe it says this dot nickname is, you know, no perhaps. We can do that if we want. Yeah? Yes, sir. Is JTAG as good as you can what the anti string is Oh, yet a bunch of the name. I think the default value of a string is null. What about the I'll say Kinchan? Ah, science, yes, you can because an empty string is still a string. An empty string is a legitimate string. Uh, can you pass a null here? You can. You can assign null to a string. Because null just means like nothing and it's legitimate for a string reference. So apparently you can do that. It's like, it's like doing this. That's okay. You can also do A is now. That's also okay. Jokes? Ha, has come. Usmes has as SP chair carnivore sense car wing carnic. Che? Et a yasm. Over as money must bottom good. And we have to ask. Che, you got it. It's a general. Ah, okay. So there's a warning here that says, like, why, why is there like a yellow line? It's because even though we made a kitten, we don't actually use the kitten. So it's like warning you saying, why did you even bother making a cat if you're not going to pet it? Or, you know, whatever. You have to use that, right? If I did now, you know, system.out.println blank dot nickname. Now blank is no longer, because I've used it somehow. You understand, right? You made an object without ever using the object. So it's kind of useless. So the, the, the development environment is warning you saying, check, are you sure you didn't just make a mistake? It's like, it's like making a variable and never using it. Actually, that's exactly what it is. Imagine doing int a is 1. There. See, it's warning you saying, so what if a is 1? No, it will not affect the compile. It will still compile. It's just warning you saying, like, why the heck did you make an A? You didn't do anything with it. Okay? Okay. Uh, is there... Please raise your... And be honest. Raise your hand if you still don't understand the difference between static and non-static members and methods. Okay. An improvement. Huh? Repeat it one more time. Okay. No problem. Look. Okay. Guys, raise your hand if you don't speak Armenian. Or keep your hands up for a second. Oh, it's just you two, right? Do you not under you understand static, non-static? Okay, so I'm just going to explain it to them because I know you know. Just two minutes. Remember the sec. Ka katu, katu unda concepta vor merugeri mechka katu vi masin. Men gideng vor katu unda tens kentania vor unin chor chorsta tinke meawa anum yevalen che. Men gideng da. Pogotsum tes numek ori nakner katu neri. Che ori nakner. Tes numek vai es ais katu vi ori nake. And what meow on Managalis Katsuma ban. I had Esela meat orinaka, Esela, Esmeka Sevorinaka, and Meka Chigam Urishkuni orinaka. Che? 
Ka konsepte katvi, vor meg haskanu meg. Ukan ori naknere kat katuneri. Che? Okay. Konsepte da klasna. Meg gideng vor ka katu. Da klasna. Da mer haskat sohut sunna katvi. Kan ori naknere instance nere. Irakan object nere. Et konsepti. Che? Ai drang stehtsvats object nernen. Hima steh. Nek. Mirope. Ah. Kitana hence kitana. Da hence katuna et konceptna. Waki. Ye for menk asu menk new kitten menk stehtsu menk orinak. Iskakan katu. Vore espai menk su menk popohakani menk ye pahu menk hrum iran. Pahu menk asu menk ais katu. Uiran anu me as ta an menk tali sa asu menk ais Fredna. Ais meka Fredna. Եթե ուզենանք էլի կատու ստեղծենք, էլի ենք ստեղծում, ասում ենք այն մեկը բան բոբնա։ Ֆրեդ նու չու խառնաստ է, միրոպե, ու բոբ։ Բոբ։ Ես այս 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 այ Ես հղումի անունը, ես դնում եմ Fred, ես հղումի անունը դնում եմ Blank, պարզվումա։ Ոկե, իսկ իրանց անունները Bob ու Fred են։ Պարզա, հիմա, Bob ու Fred-ը իրանք ամեն մեկը ունեն իրանց անունները։ Չկա մի հատա ընդհանուրանուն կծացա ինստենցներին, որինակներին, ամեն որինակը ունի իրա նիկնեիմը, իրա անունը, որը նան ստարեք է, դա ստարեք չի, դա նշակումա ամեն մեկը իրանը ունի, բայց կատվի կոնսեպշրլի հենց կատուն, կատուն, ունի, չի գիտեմ, ատամ, Հենց կատուկ ճանաչում եք, որ սատ կարջ չի, որ չի շնչում, չի գիտեք, չէ, ոկե, ուրեմ են շնչելը դա կոնսեպտա, դա ինստենչ չի, դա որինակի էտ կապչունի, բոլորը դա ունեն, ձրամար էտ մենք չենք կպցնու� Իսկ սովորական ոչ ստատիկները կպաց են հենց ինստնցներին։ Այսինքն վերադարնում ենք մեր որինակին։ Ստեղ, բեյբիզը, որվորդև բեյբիզ կոնսեպ չի, չէ, ես մեկը կարող է հինգատունենա, ես մեկը վե� ունի իրավերակացած վու կոնսեպտը, որի աժեքը մեկա։ Կեն բան։ Ես այլ 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 It's 2.16. Okay, in that case, let's just practice a little bit. Um, basically, as far as Java goes, I've taught you more or less everything I want to teach you. You understand classes, this notion of these concepts that can be used to then construct actual instances, right? We understand that. So you have a cat and you have an actual instance of a cat. Fine. Um, we understand that it has strict typing. Every time you want to make a place to store something, you have to say exactly the kind of thing you want to put into it. Every time you make a variable, you have to say, is it a number? Is it a string? Is it a cat? What is it that you want to store inside this variable? You have to say that. Um, every time you declare a function, you have to say what are going to be the inputs, also the types of inputs, and also what is the type of output that you expect. If you don't expect a result, it's a void. Right? Void means nothing. Void means return nothing. Okay. Your application begins by running a function. What is the name of the very first function that runs to start your application? Main. 
public so that it can be accessed from outside of your class. Makes sense. Static because the execution engine does not want to make an instance, it just wants to run it. It just wants to say class name dot main and run you. It returns nothing because the thing that X calls you doesn't care about any output. And it takes an array of strings because that can be passed in as an argument to you to begin your application. <coughs> I think that's it. Other than that, you know, like if statements, loops, it's basically just like JavaScript with the few nuances that we discussed here about how variables need to be declared. Other than that, the syntax is almost exactly the same. And that makes it very easy to learn. Are there any questions about Java in general up until this point? Anything you guys are like a little iffy about that you want me to review? Nothing? Okay, so let's practice a bit then. So we have this driver public static void main, let's delete that, and let's make a static function, public static, uh, that will return an array of numbers, why not? Um, foo. Is that right? In Charles, is it? Return new int array. Really? Huh? No, because that's an array. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't know that it's an array. Oh, I have to do this? Wait, wait. And now I can return A, maybe? Can I do that? I love Java. It's such a beautiful language. How is this not the same darn thing as, okay, shh, breathe, Ruben, breathe, it's okay. This can be an array of doubles, and it doesn't... You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, he, yes, that's a very good point. Uh, when you just do this, it's difficult to know, even though we've clearly said that we want to return ints here, and it can be inferred. Java wants you to explicitly create an, a variable of ints like this. That's what I mean. you, can, you can write return new ints and array three length and then this. Or yeah, but then you can't return. You, you can't. Once, 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 pass it. Return new int, the square ones, the length three, and then the scoops and one, two, three. Ah, then like this? Mm -hmm. Love, love, love. Oshim. Haskatsang. Okay, Kharna. Okay, I want you guys to learn just the simple stuff. Don't worry about this weird complicate. Here, good. Okay. Baza. It's an array of ints, a variable called A, and we put in there an array of one, two, three. Remember that curlies in, in JavaScript are objects, but here it's a little different. Right? Here you can use them to declare an array. Okay, so um, what do I want to do here? Let's write a function that will reverse this array in Java. So let's take an array, int um, r, and let's return the reversed version of that array. Huh? It's it's what? It's the homework. Oh, it is the homework? Uh, let's not do that. What's not in the homework? Can I compute the average of these numbers? Is that in the homework? Is that the homework to compute the average? No, let's compute the average. So imagine I give you a list of numbers. I want to know the average of these numbers. Everyone understands what needs to be done? Yes. Okay, tell me. Oh, I want to return, an average is one number, right? So int, okay. All right, tell me, what do I do? Four. For what? <laughs> For this, I shall, huh? Okay. All right, not bad. So this will give me a loop that will loop over the array. Over the array. Not bad. Okay, now what? Uh, you should create a, a variable first that's sum equals to zero. 
Int sum is zero. Okay, now you stop talking. The rest of you. Sum plus Uh huh. Inch. Ah, nasa. Hi, aplas. Okay, so sum keeps increasing by itself adding to the next value. Right? Okay, so then we want to return what? Okay, if I give you an array like, for the, for the confusion, suppose I give you an array like this. Um, one, two, and three. Um, I add them up, so I do one plus two, that's three, three plus three, that's six, right? What do I divide by? Three. 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 What is the length of this array? Three. So, okay, so no minus one. Okay. Congratulations, we just implemented an average function. Weepee. Inchu. Chishta, what have integer interval? In other words, menakia take a load on now, summer, no rejamanak. Chishta. So, okay, you're right. So let's change it to double. Uh, and then we got to change this to bubble. There. I Wait, okay, so wait, 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 you're saying if it's if it's you're declaring it as a double and the result you get it doesn't actually use any decimal points, right? It only, it's a whole number. If it's a whole number, it will write... The, the what do you mean write? When you say it will write, what will write? It will return a double. It will return, it will return double, which is a piece of memory that has a number of bits in it, where some of them have been flipped to the point where they're showing, let's say, 10, and all the ones that are supposed to show decimal are all zero, 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 zero. Okay, now keep going. Okay. In this case, if it's so, how to make these zeros uh, disappear in the problem? Easy. So when you call, if you, if you have a double A, that is um, 1.0. And then later you say, you know what, I don't need it to be a double anymore. What does hard say? You extra you extract or you cat what does it mean to cast? Right? You're taking the part, you lose some precision when you do this, which you don't care about because you don't care about the decimal, and you keep only the part that fits the int, and that's the one that gets passed over. Yes? But what if we don't know if this has a zero or not? For example, we're giving different arrays to this How do you make a boolean you come up? Um, okay, so there's a weird way to check whether something is an integer or not. I don't remember exactly what that is, but just... Or you can write a function that does it somehow. Yes. yes. Go. On Havasara Inchov? On Bajanam Mekov? Yeah, that's. I don't think that's correct, is it? It's not correct. Tas Bajan that's making inch atalis. Watch this, bro. Oh, modulo you had. Oh, yes. So what you can do is you can say if a modulo one is equal to is not equal sorry is not equal to zero in Chajana. 
You're just dividing and seeing if there's a remainder. Um, so if it is not zero, then wait, if it is zero, if it, sorry, if it is zero, <coughs> sorry, then you can do int b and cast it int to a. Et Cool. Uh, yes, sir. Int b equals int a, so it's the same as selling function. Int e equals int a. Consider a as, let's say, negative, negative number. What will we get? Suppose a is, uh, um, let's say. Okay, tell me what to write. Go. Negative 3.5. Int a is negative 3. Point. Wait, you can't have an int. It has to be a double. Double? Yes? Okay, now what? If you want to make an integer. To cast it to an integer, you get negative 3. No, it doesn't round. It doesn't. Okay, good, 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 good question, guys. Listen, when you cast, there's no rounding. You just lose precision. Yeah, you just take the integer. You lose precision. There's no magic. Yeah. Yes, sir. Ha, sense at those bands. Joe, guess. Ah, cool. Okay, merci. Um. Okay, good. Other questions? Okay. Um, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Can you give an example of um, applying function for each or under a job? Sure. Okay. So uh, let's create a function public step. Ah. But what do you want me to do for each? Rem I mean, we haven't studied lambdas. So in JavaScript, you can just give a function as an argument, right? In Java, it's not that simple. Um, okay, here's what we will do. I know. And a class called kitten. Bear with me. We will then... Uh, for int i is 0, i is less than r dot length, i plus plus, for each of those, we will do kitten dot, um, we'll make up a new function called zoo, and we'll pass our i to it. And now in kitten, let's create a function called zoo. Right, zoo, which takes an int. And uh, system dot out dot print line a. Okay, so look, a kitten has a zoo inside of it, right? So what we do here? Wait, why? What's happening? Oh, kitten. Okay, sorry. Okay. Ah, Jeff. Okay, so uh, our function takes two things, an array and a class of type kitten, something, anything that is a kitten. And then what we will do is we will call the zoo function of that kitten for every value inside of that array. Yeah? That's it, that's how you do it. And then you, if you want to call it, you just do for each, you give it um, and then a new a new kitten. Ah, oh, okay. This. Give them, give them. Let's change some bars. Now, give them. R is this, and this can be R. Okay, good. There. Look, I'm giving it the array of numbers and a new kitten. And then that kitten has a zoo that gets called every time. Yeah. Actually, let's call it meow. Let's have each cat meow. And let's do purr. Okay, and yes, I will run it now. So, um, one second, function command f11. 
Per one, two, three. That's suck? Yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. A game in Java. Okay. So, good question. So, the question is how do you write a game in Java? So, to write a game in Java, so a game, if you think about it, consists of three things your data, where you like your game data. Your update function, which is the logic, right? That's the part that changes things, does hit testing, and so on. And the draw function, the part that actually updates some user interface. Yes? Okay. The data part is fairly straightforward. You just make a bunch of classes with members, and the members have the data. Right? So a cat has a name, a phone number, whatever. You can easily have a, a hero who has an X, a Y, a width, a height, whatever. That's, that's, you get that. The logic also, just a bunch of functions. We got that, right? The question is, how do you draw this stuff? Okay, there are two ways to do it. One is to, use, is to just do system.out.println and just dump things to the console. It's a crappy game if you do that because the interface is very bad, right? Just, it's like doing console logs. It's not going to look great. If you want to draw something cool on the screen, you need to use a library. There are libraries that have been written that allow you to basically draw things on the screen. Um, there's a library called Swing, for example, um, that you can use to create user interfaces to draw things on the screen. There's a library called SWT that also allows you to do this. Um, I think later when you guys study um, either data structures or object-oriented programming, I'm not sure, I think you're going to be using Swing to draw things. I think you're going to be building applets and stuff like that. Um, to be honest, this stuff isn't really used a lot in industry. Um, but for example, Eclipse, this application here, all these buttons, this is written using a library called SWT because Eclipse itself is written in Java. Like this window here with all those files and the code and everything, that's written in Java. But it's drawn on the screen using a library called SWT. So the answer to your question is you can do it, but you have to use a library. Um, and depending on which library you use, you have a different API. That is to say, a different set of functions to use to do that. But the Java project that's Okay, so look, what you can do is you can run Java, you need something to run Java, right? You can run Java on your server side, on your own computer. When you're serving out pages, it's, the requests are coming to your computer, right? So you can run Java on your computer to do whatever you want. To read from a database, to construct HTML files, to do whatever you want, no problem. You can build HTML files really just by writing to a file and then send that file. No problem. Um, on the client side, the only way to, that I know of to run Java is inside of an applet, which is in, like an environment that's made for you to run Java inside. Um, operating between that and the JavaScript inside of your browser, I've never tried. I have no idea if it's even possible. I really don't know. Um, other questions? No, nothing? Okay, I won't keep you long. Let's take a photo.